much money do you want to make? No, really, how much money do you want to make? I know that's a hard question sometimes for us to answer. And especially when you're trying to figure out how much salary should you pay yourself as an entrepreneur? What can you be doing to have the lifestyle that you want to live? It's a really important question too. That's why I recorded this short interview with my friend and colleague, Jaquette Timmons. Jaquette is an author, a speaker, a media personality who is all about the behavior, the financial behaviors that are really going to have a bigger impact on your success. Because as Jaquette will tell us, financial success isn't about dollars and cents. It's about how you approach your relationship with the money you make. All right, Jaquette, I am so excited to jam with you today to talk about all this money stuff that people get locked up in their head about. Oh my God, you have no idea how excited I am for us to have this jam session too. So thank you for having me. Awesome. So Jaquette, I mean, I, I gave a little bit of an introduction of who you are and what you're all about, but I want you to just tell the people watching and listening to this right now, like the one thing that you would love for them to know as business owners about their money. For me, I think um, the biggest thing would be to recognize that we're not really managing money so much as we are managing choices. And so we really need to be clear about what, what is that map of the different choices that we need to make as it pertains to our businesses and how that ripples down to affect us on a personal level. Yeah, and that personal level is so important because if you don't get those two things connected, you end up like a lot of people do, which is working really hard and not getting anything out of it at the end of exactly, the day. Exactly, exactly. You're not getting the return that you want. You're not getting the return that perhaps you need. And you don't even recognize what the source of that disconnect is. So it's so important to get that connection right. All right. So let's, let's start talking about that. Let's figure okay. out how we're going to get this connection right. Perfect. So walk us through, I mean, I know you've, you've worked with so many people on this. What, mm -hmm. what, what's the method? How do you start to fix that connection? So I always say that, you know, in terms of getting the connection between your business finances and your personal finances right, that you have to start with the personal. <laughs> And so you really need to understand what is it that you want in the four primary dimensions that really, regardless of income, regardless of wealth, we all have to contend with. And that's earn, save, invest, and spend. And I put that in a container that I call the financial wheel. And so with the financial wheel, we're dealing with each of those different dimensions of money. Would you like me to go through the yeah, questions? Let's go, let's go through each of those in order. Yeah, walk us through okay. it. Okay, perfect. So if, if people have pen and paper nearby as they're watching or listening, what I would invite them to do is take out a, a piece of paper and grab a pen and draw a circle as large as they possibly can, divide it so that the inside of that circle has both a horizontal line and a vertical line. And the way in which they're going to plot this is earn is going to be on the upper left-hand side, save on the upper right, beneath save, invest, and then in the space that remains, spend. We're going to start, though, with going through a series of questions on the save side. And the first question that I want you to do or think about, well, actually, even before you do that, is to kind of just wave the magic wand and suspend what you know is real in the moment and give yourself permission to, like, think big and grandiose. But if you waved that magic wand in the next 30 days, what would you want to say you have saved? What will you want to say you have saved by the end of this year? And then if you think of your oldest relative in your family, what's the amount that you want to say that you have accumulated in savings over the course of time to that person's age? And then for each of those numbers, indicate why. Mm -hmm. So again, the time frames for save is how much do you want to save by, in the next 30 days, by the end of the year, and by the time you reach the age of the eldest person in your family, and then also why. So that takes care of the save container. And that's completely assuming that 
you had that magic wand and you could save as much as you wanted, what would that number be? Totally. Yep. Yep. So suspending any attachment to what you see as possible right now. <laughs> <laughs> So that takes care of save. And then we're going to move on to invest. Now, normally when we think about investing, we think about assets in terms of like real estate that we might want to own. We might also think of it in the context of investing in the market, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, things of that nature. And that's perfectly fine. But what I want to invite people to do is to expand the definition of investing and to then think about the people in their lives that they want to be able to support and the causes that they want to be able to support. And then just have a general idea of what does that support look like? What's the amount of money that you are bequeathing to these people while you're living? <laughs> What's the amount of money that you're giving them that you're not asking them if it's you know family and friends, you're not asking them to pay you back. And if it's to a cause that you want to just support them in you know, fulfilling whatever their mission is. So then that takes care of investing. So the difference and between then, saving and investing, sorry to interrupt you, but I want to make no sure worries. people are getting this. Yeah, so yeah, the, yeah. The totally. difference between saving and investing is saving is what you're saving for you. Investing is what you're investing in other people or other causes or that kind of thing. Have I got that right? You do have that right. And then I would say that I'm not omitting the fact of, you know, investing in real estate and investing in stocks and bonds, with stocks and bonds, which would be a part of investing in you. But I think um, the good way to think of it is the, the discipline and the practice of saving is you are extracting money out of the pool of money that you would utilize to do things with in the moment. And some of that is going to be invested and some of that's just going to stay liquid. Yeah. So for me, the invest part is things that's not liquid. Gotcha. Good. Cool. All right. That's well, the first thing. Thanks for asking that clarifying question because <laughs> I'm sure somebody listening or watching will probably have had that as well. Um, but then that takes us to the spend category. And here what I want people to think about is just their lifestyle. What is it that you are not doing? What is it that you are not buying? Where is it that you are not going? Because today money is a factor. And if those factors were taken away, if money was not an issue, what would you do differently? Where would you go? What would you buy? And what would you do with your time? So, you know, answer those questions. And then that brings us to earn. And here, this is where it gets a little tricky for entrepreneurs because especially if you started your entrepreneurial journey while you were working for someone else, you are accustomed to somebody else dictating what your salary ought to be. Now you're the one who is dictating what your salary ought to be. And far too often, we don't do that, right? <laughs> so here is where you get to say, okay, how about I take a step back and I think about this as objectively as possible and again, suspending what is real in the moment and ask and answer the question of, well, what do I want to earn in the next 30 days? What do I want to earn by the end of this year? And again, going back to that oldest relative that you have in your family, what do you want to say you've earned over the course of your lifetime by the time you reach that person's age? And if people were paying attention to the subtlety, what they would have noticed is that the way in which we drew the financial wheel is very different in terms of the order or the sequence that we went about asking the questions. And that was intentional. Having us draw the circle begin with earn is really to kind of tap into the fact that that is how many of us have been conditioned to manage our lives. You know, you make decisions about in sa savings, you make decisions about investing, you make decisions about spending based upon what you earn. Whereas the sequence that I'm, you know, advocating with doing the financial wheel is to say, well, how about determining what do you need to earn in order to save the amount that you want to save, to do what you want to do in terms of investing and to create the lifestyle that you want to have. Now, Jaquette, I know that people are going to do this and they're going to look at how big that earn number has to be to get everything else they want. And then they're going to look at what maybe they're not drawing a salary at all from their business. Yep. Yep. And there's like this gulf between yep. the two. So, yep. you know, we've got a lot of tactics on the business development side that we can talk about. But 
I mean, you're a financial behaviorist, so I don't want to talk about tactics. I want to talk about the mental game and what's going on between the ears. When you see that big gap, what do we need to be doing to help us feel like, yeah, not only can I earn that much, but I deserve to earn that much and I should be earning that much. What's the, you know, like I said, we can talk about the tactics all day yep. long, but yep. I want to talk about the behavior side of this, the right. mental game. Well, the very first behavior I think that's going to be necessary is that people are going to have to take a deep breath. <laughs> Good. Say, Let's okay. all do that right now. Just in <laughs> and out. Deep breath. <laughs> oh, my God. Which I need to take anyway because it is hot as heck in New York. Um, but uh, so take a deep breath and recognize that the there is a gap. And that gap doesn't have to necessarily be a bad thing that gap can actually be an invitation to invite you to ask different questions, to think differently, to um, revisit what are the tactics that perhaps you need to um, explore, re-examine, experiment with, that will help you to actually close that gap. And what I have found is that for a lot of us, myself included, when you do this exercise and you and you do it with the intent of making that connection between your business finances and your personal finances, you end up having to reevaluate your business model. Yes. And I think that that's going to be the biggest behavior uh, adjustment that people are going to have to make. And that is exactly why I wanted to record this video, because outside of this video, in the third week of our school of operations that we're doing, we're, I want I want to challenge you guys to take this exercise that Jaquette has walked you through, take this financial wheel exercise, figure out what that earn needs to look like to be able to fill in those other segments of the pie. Yeah. And then figure out like, what do you actually need to be charging as an hourly rate just to cover your salary? Never mind your operating expenses and your taxes and some profit for the business and all that good stuff. And so Jaquette, thank you so much for joining us on this video, walking people through your exercise. I know that there are people who are going to say, man, I need to watch this video over and over because I want to actually go through that exercise. But you actually have like a worksheet that people can grab that'll walk them through that exercise, right? Yeah, totally. So if they want to go back and they want to revisit it again, and, and in fact, especially if they have business partners or even, you know, a personal partner whose numbers need to be factored into what that business model ultimately looks like, it's perfect for everybody to do it together, if you will. So they can go to my site, which is jacquettetimmons.com forward slash wheel, and then they can download the exercise and they'll have the recording and they can walk through it again. Perfect. Yeah. And I'll make sure that we've got a link to all of that so that people can find that really easily. I know Jaquette is also active on the Twitters and that kind yes. of stuff, which yes. is all linked through her website. So uh -huh. yeah, if you want to kind of dive into the behavioral and mental game around your money and connect that back to your business finance and your personal finance. You know, Jaquette is a, a personal friend, but also someone that I really respect and that I go to when I've got money blocks. So Jaquette, thank you so oh, much for joining Brian. us and sharing your wisdom. Oh, Brian, thank you so much. I really, really have enjoyed my time and good luck to everybody who's in the operation school. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks, Jaquette. Thanks. Bye.